All right, today we're going to learn how to find palindromes in Python. And I have three solutions here for you. Is palindrome one, two, and three? And we're going to run through them and little bit, learn a little bit more about palindromes. Now, I think the best place to get started is actually with a definition. So a palindrome is a word, number, phrase, or other sequence of characters which read the same forwards and backwards. So madame, race car, ABBA, ABBA is the example I have here. And we're going to plug in a couple of these palindromes into our functions and see how this works. So uh, let's run it. We're printing out our first function and we see that ABBA is in fact a palindrome. And if I just tagged on another letter here, um, when we return that, it's returning false. Uh, this is no longer a palindrome. Oh, and actually I noticed um, a fun palindrome here, some kind of Greek thing. So we can make this our word. And I've tried this out already. Uh, this returns false because of the spaces. So it's not a true palindrome in a sense, but if we remove the spaces, uh, that is returning true. That Greek phrase is a palindrome as well. So I kind of just wanted to point out that this would work for non ASCII characters. Um, anyway, um, let's get rid of this, clean up our console a little bit, and let's start running through uh, these three functions in more detail. Okay, so taking a step back, the big idea is we need to check if these strings read the same way forwards and backwards. So my first solution is using slice notation to reverse a string. Uh, the second solution is using the reversed built-in function to reverse a string. And then the third solution here, this is a more algorithmically minded solution if speed and performance are important to you. And for this one, we're kind of like working our way to the middle of the string from both sides, if that makes sense. Um, so I'll show you all these in detail one by one. So for number one, that is true for ABBA. And you might be wondering how this slice notation works. So what I'll do is I'll just open um, a little Python shell here. Sorry if the screen is small. Um, but let's just say we had any word, right? So A, B, C, D, E, F. We could use slice notation the same way we're doing in our function to reverse that string. And you see it's returning F, E, D, whatever. So we're reversing that string and we're comparing the original to the reversed. Make sense? And then when we move on to solution two, the reverse functions. So we would take that string, we wrap reversed around it, and we get kind of a reversed object. Um, I guess it's an iterable as well. And then we use join to change it back to a string and change its type back to a string. Um, another way you could kind of do this is you could make both the, of the items lists. So you could wrap a list around it and have a list of strings and just convert this guy to a list of strings as well and maybe c compare lists of strings. So that's another option. And we could, we could try that out too. So we'll close the Python shell, uh, get back to our code. I'll comment out solution one. And now we're going to be, oops, now we're going to be printing solution two. So we see that ABBA is true. If we made our word madame, uh, that's true. So I think that's important that we have both an even and an odd string so that we're checking both of those situations because they could have different results. So like I pointed out in the Python shell, if I made this a list, and how would I make this a list? I think I could use the sorted function and compare these and no, okay. I just need to use list and compare these. Sweet, so we're here we're comparing two lists of strings uh, instead of comparing the strings directly. So comparing different types, so just another way you could do it. Um, if you weren't a fan of using join, then you could use that list scenario. So really we got four solutions here. Okay, now we will move on to solution number three. And this is an interesting one um, if you're more algorithmically minded. I don't wanna to get too deep into that stuff. We're gonna keep it at a high level, 
But first we'll run this, um, see that Madame is a palindrome. And what I wanted to do is actually use some print statements just to show the functionality to you guys. So first I wanted to print I. And what's interesting about this is we're using a five letter word, um, but it's only incrementing twice. And the reason that's happening is because of this statement where we're dividing the length of the string by two. So we could do say len word is this, and we're gonna take our newly created variable and replace that in our function. And part of the reason I wanted to do that was just to print out this variable uh, so you can see what's going on, okay? So we'll clear this, run it, and see the len is two. Next, I wanted to show you what's happening once we get into the range function. So we're gonna print out both of, um, both of these values that we're comparing. And you can see that it's M and A, M and A. And so they're pairs, right? And if this was different, when we go to run this, we go to compare it. Um, it just has to compare the M and the S to see that those are not the same value, so it ends sooner. Um, if it ended with M, then it's gonna move on to that second value. So it's comparing the M's, the M's are good, and then it's comparing A to S, and it'll break because those are not the same. So we could compare this again. Uh, the M's are the same, the A's are the same, and then it's comparing D and S in the middle, and it sees that those are not the same, um, and so therefore it's not a palindrome. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we could even just put some more letters on the outside so you can see it iterating a few times before it goes. So we're comparing A's, good. We're comparing A's, good. A's, good. M, good. A dot. And then D, S in the middle, it finds out that it's not a palindrome. So it doesn't find out it's not a palindrome until the very middle. But what's good and performant about the solution is it doesn't have to traverse the whole string every time. It's only traversing it in incrementally and at a maximum, it's only gonna look at half the string. So instead of having to look at the whole string, it's only looking at half the string and that's what makes it more speedy and performant. All right, I think that's pretty much everything. So I just wanted to clear up our code here. Um, turn all the print statements back on, make sure that they're all, oops, make sure that they're all working at once. And we can run this and see all three are true um, for a four letter word. And all three will be true for a five letter word, which is a palindrome. And if we make something that's not a palindrome, all three will be false. Um, so here are three approaches, three solutions to find a palindrome in Python. And again, there was actually a uh, 3.5 or another solution, I guess we'll call it 2.5, where we used list instead of join, um, if that's helpful for you. So there you have it, four solutions for palindromes in Python. Thanks for watching.